Hello and welcome to Film Seizure. We are in the third week of Force February. That's correct, Jeff, right? Yes, Jeff, third, third week of, of Force February 2021. 2021. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> no, listen, to this, listen to this guy. Listen to this Today, guy. we're covering a movie that Jason does not care for called <laughs> Tactical Force. Well, uh, he, okay, hang on a second here, Chuck, real quick. He does sort of care for it. But he also doesn't care for it, and and we're gonna hear him bounce back and forth. This this movie is spectacularly mediocre. <laughs> I can and I, I can I can try and, I, and I'm honestly having trouble even remembering it to talk about it now. And I, I just got two pages in notes. Twelve hours ago. Well, so, first off, it's it's directed by Adamo Paolo Coltraro. <laughs> that was my guy. first belly. <laughs> it's like. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, and it's, yeah. and it's, it's Stone Cold acted by people like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Michael oh. Chai White, who is who, Jeff? Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite. Like I love Black Dynamite. One of these He's spawned, too. He's also spawned. Well, and, that's, that's okay. But one of these days, we're going to talk about Black Dynamite. And it may be right now in this episode. <laughs> was sure. He, was he better in Black Dynamite than he was in this movie? Uh, <laughs> the incomparable, but he got to but he got to use his kung fu, which was awesome. I, the I wrote incomparable Michael Garrett Shanks. Yeah, Michael Shanks. He was he was solid. Uh, we'll he get fucking to, saved this movie for me. Yeah, we'll get to what he was um, in a bit here. But a lot again, of yeah, Michael's this is, in this movie. Yeah, Michael and a lot of Stone Cold stuff and a lot of Michaels. <laughs> um, so yeah, what do we have here? We have a movie about we have a movie we have about a, movie. a SWAT team. Who, There's one of those who overexerts themselves in situations, and yeah, they end up uh, in a prom problematic situation because of it. Um, I would feel like everything they do is a problematic situation. Probably, but I mean, they can usually probably problematically probably fight out of those situations, um, which whether they do not, in the first scene. Yeah, whether or not it's all very legal or not, I don't know. We'll see about it's that. 100% the stupidest thing I've ever seen, but it's awesome. I mean, I don't know if it gets much better in this movie than the first five minutes. Ah, uh, no, I don't know. I mean, Cobra is a little bit better than this, but, but, but if we're going to. No, I mean, this movie is never better than the first five minutes. So. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. at times, maybe. I don't know, but those. It, There's no with... Michael Shanks in the first five minutes. Yeah, that's fair. But there is machine gun typewriter font. Oh, oh God. God. Throughout. Throughout. <laughs> yes. I want, I want a legitimate, like, typewriter with ribbon ink ribbon that when i press the buttons on it sounds like a machine gun i'm on, i need to have one did yeah, they make the, those i'm uh, sure i'm sure somebody can make one of those i bet <laughs> i bet you get a program where your keyboard will make those sounds for you that actually oh my god cool. probably <laughs> i would feel i would feel so so manly yes oh would, yeah as i type cold You'd be I would cold. feel like I feel stone cold Steve Austin. What's what's his what's his Bible verse that he always what's the Austin Steve Cold three sixteen? Yeah, what is oh, that? Yeah. yeah, it was Austin three sixteen. The same as uh, it's just there was a take on the John three sixteen. Okay. I mean it's not That's, intelligent. But what's, I mean, but what's the not... thing behind that? I don't know anything about wrestling, guys. <laughs> so I don't um, know anything about I'm surprised because I always Austin. go to you for my wrestling knowledge. <laughs> All I know is that Stone Cold Steve Austin in wrestling seems like a pretty charismatic guy. He's very popular in wrestling. He does not carry over even a little bit of that charisma into this movie. Not one bit. Yeah, he's kind of great value Jesse Ventura. Yes. Yes, he is. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me just I, – I lost a lot of air in the first few minutes of this movie from laughing so hard that I nearly passed out. <laughs> the first yeah. thing that happened and I had to pause the fucking movie, go backwards to make sure I saw this right. And then pause it again to write my note for this. 
because then the the credit started shooting at me and i was like whoa i better i better pay i better get my head up and you know out of my ass here but um the the logo for the production company is a camera lens but it's not a movie camera lens it's a still photography lens and at, at that point i thought oh oh we're in for something special and what is the difference between a photography lens and a in a a film lens is uh, it just quite, bigger quite a bit um it's quite a bit of difference whereas you know it's like the like a like a still photography lens is just like a like a tube whereas like a a film photography lens is like a box you know and it like sticks you know like it has like the um uh what um I don't know. It's it's like a um, what do they call those? Like a parallelogram. <laughs> okay, I know what I'm talking about. All right, I yeah. know what I'm talking you're, you're, about. You're, you're, you have sure. a cine lens versus a uh, photo lens. Yes, they, yes. The wrong and lens. They put the photo lens at the front. So I'm thinking, either um, the people who financed this movie and made it either don't know anything about movies, or um this was going to be a movie made out of animated photographs and i was or it was funded it. funded by a wedding photography company maybe possibly that's possibly and well, well like, i liked i liked when stone cold steve austin decided to charge the one uh hostage taker yeah like like he can run faster than this guy can shoot and surprise okay. he can but my favorite part was when he hit him how the the camera did the first of many of these kind of shaky things oh, to yeah. make you feel to make you feel like ooh, it was like a I'm, rumble I'm, pack I'm, impact to you it was I, yeah it's a rumble pack it was it was exactly <laughs> like that it's like a fucking rumble pack it's like i feel like i should have been um you know wearing a bodysuit that, that made me feel myself get get slammed by stone called steve austin yeah so <laughs> so you have these people of of all the places to rob and take hostages, they're at a what sir saves a lot. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah go, they're at a goddamn grocery store. Like you're gonna get money out of a grocery. It's store. fucking Cobra. It's Cobra. Yeah, it is. Like, it is Cobra. The, the, the opening scene of Cobra is what this is. Yeah, no, fair. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Adamo Paulo Coltero. Coltero. That's a that's a mouthful there. Um, he saw Cobra and he's like, ah, yeah. yes, Cobra. <laughs> I just I'm going to you. I'm going to make a movie <laughs> The stone called Steve Austin uh, <laughs> uh, So uh man yeah uh, so So yeah these guys are taking over taking over the grocery store and they they have these demands, which I'm even unsure. I don't know if we ever hear the demands, but all of a sudden, Steve Steve Cold Sean Austin or whatever his name is <laughs> goes up with his <laughs> Steve Cold <laughs> <'Cause> Steve Cold <laughs> Sean Austin. <laughs> he, he shows up with his SWAT team, and they. They're like, no, we don't want your demands. We're not going to take your demands. No, we'll, well, the first thing he does hard is way. he totally cucks the uh, the original negotiator. Yeah, he says, you're taking the rest of the day off. Get out yeah, here. get the fuck out of here, loser. Yeah. I bet you he gets vote on the for phone, Democrats. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you're dealing with me now. The other guy's gone for the day. And he's like, we could do this the easy way or the hard way. All right, we're coming in. He <laughs> hangs up on him, and he, that's basically what happens. <laughs> and then the other guy literally shits himself, I think, because he's like, oh, fuck, they're coming in. Well, oh, at, that coming point, in. at that point, and the grocery your store manager, And the grocery store manager is 100% uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda from Hamilton, like dead ringer for that guy. <laughs> well, it might have been, been where uh, Miranda got his start. Could have been. Could have I mean, been. Maybe. Tactical I mean, Force, yeah, 2011. That, Lin yeah. went... Lynn Manuel Miranda before he was famous. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of using their weapons or being tactical, they basically just bum rush. Yeah. Everyone in the place. So first off, we have one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Um, a frozen filet thrown at the head of one of the, 
one of the hostages to knock him out so he falls down <laughs> so they can then shoot the bad guy. Um, we have <laughs> Michael Jai White with a, a Red Rider BB gun on his back. So he drops all his weapons, right? But he has this BB gun and he's, I don't know, he just shoots the dude in the head. And then My favorite part of that scene was that the, the, the hostage shaker, robber, was so confused by the BB gun that he took his mask off. He yeah. was just yeah, like, I gotta, to I gotta get a better look at that. <laughs> he takes his, takes his fucking mask off and allows himself to be identified. Ugh. I mean, it's Force February. We know there's going to be stupidity. Yeah. But the amount of times that people didn't shoot when they should have shot at somebody <laughs> is fucking it's astounding. astounding. Yes. It's astounding in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is, oh, yeah. Okay. You can, you can argue all you want about, like, you know, is it really is it really like hubris or is it like stupidity when like the Bond villain has James Bond dead to rights and then he lets him go, right? Like Goldfinger was gonna cut off Sean Connery's balls in real life and and he just lets him go because because Bond said, Hey, um, I know a thing about a thing. And he's like, Oh, do you now? And then he lets them go. And it's like, okay, well, some of that is hubris. Some of that is stupidity. Some of it is whatever. This is just stupidity, I think. Or, uh, yeah. or, or that it's really, really hard to get to 89 minutes. So you kind yeah, of I guess. To, you kind uh, of have to let them go. You have to have, to have five minutes of Steve Cold running down an aisle where a guy should have shot him, as Jason mentioned, and he's just watching him like well, in awe. He's watching him like a fucking rhinoceros charging yeah, him. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like, oh, no. Well, oh, I kind of feel oh, like... The camera's shaking. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I kind of feel like, though, also, like, I think the... I think, uh, Adamo Paolo Coltrero looked at this and thought, this is kind of like, um, this is my live action version of like an anime, like when there's the action run and there's like all the lights and stuff behind the person. And it's like, <laughs> except for he didn't do any of the other shit. So you just see a, like a, a big old, probably fucked up need Steve Cold, Austin John running towards somebody <laughs> like poorly <laughs> yes it, it's bad but he he crushes so he basically destroys the rent-a-cop yes. and the and the dude who was holding him i wish they exploded I really wish I mean, it had exploded when he hit him. And <laughs> they, they, they stepped over did. later. Like the poor fucking rent a cop. It's like, yeah. dude, I, I I guard a grocery store. Yeah. Like, what do you want from me? You know? And he's so disrespected in the end by the SWAT team as they walk out of the grocery store in triumph. They just like step over him. He might as well just spit in his fucking face. It's like you pieces of shit. Like honestly, <laughs> this movie that's these three, these four characters up. Like, just total a-holes. Like, I don't like you at all. And it doesn't get much better from there. <laughs> no, I wanted them to die. And yeah. We kind of get our wish a little They're later. like, they're arrogant. They're fucking stupid. Jeff said it best when he, when he was uh, chatting us. He was like, guys, defund the police. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because at one point, they're driving around in a van that has um, enough stuff to... to win the vietnam war if they had been in vietnam they were the they would have won that war yeah yes. they were like that they look like the a-team at that point yeah so, <laughs> before we get to that point because i have oh, a question does that mean the that black thing. dynamite is b.a Baracus? it's got him yes yeah, he's sorry. badass black dynamite yeah <laughs> um so they go that. they yeah. go to their little locker room and they celebrate their victory and their you know self masturbation hmm. you know scene real quick though i hear one Real quick we are before we get to that, um, I do want to talk about some of the paraphernalia inside the truck in the open. Oh, okay. When we're sure. introduced to these guys, how are we introduced to them? Not by their voice, not by their face, not by their visage. We are introduced to them by a sticker on the inside of their uh, thing right next to a Confederate flag that reads, I saved Rodney King and all I got was this lousy sticker. I don't get that joke and I feel I like it's very bad taste. Considering there is a an African American and a um, I would assume it's like a Latino American, I think on the team. There ain't a fucking two. American in this movie. 
it's Canadian as fuck. <laughs> but still, what the fuck? Yeah, what is that? What is that? What is the message of that? You know? Well, the message is <laughs> defund the police, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the message is, Michael J. White, are you embarrassed by this movie? Because you should be. <laughs> yeah, well. I would never, if I ever met him, I would never ask him a single question about this movie. <laughs> I would probably ask him a thousand questions about this movie. No, I've got all my questions are for Black Dynamite, the cartoon series, not, <laughs> not even the movie. <laughs> Be like, why do you, what do you, why do you need money so bad, so badly, Michael? You're can you, can you, yeah. yeah, you respond. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get any of that Todd McFarlane baseball money. <laughs> Yikes. He's so he's moved so far beyond the baseball man. He's like he's Tom McFarlane action figure money. Oh shit, that's true. That's true. <laughs> he's he's oh, Tom McFarlane kiss action figure money. <laughs> I'm just gonna be one fucking divergent in this episode, guys. So that's you, uh, whatever. You need to keep it on track. Keep it on track, Chuck. We can I'll talk. Try. About, we can talk about this. All right, continue on. Now we're in the locker room. Yeah, they're in the locker room. They self congratulate each other, and then they find out that in the, the most wa- annoying ways uh, possible. Yeah, it's really st- it's like all jocularity and dumbness. Yeah, it's like um, they're all they're all practically fingering each other's assholes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, totally. literally, they're, I think they are. They're a human centipede. Any, yeah, pretty they're much. They're human centipede, and they're yeah congratulating each other so that's why they were putting on the latex gloves okay. uh-huh. yes yep yeah. but they get called into the sergeant's office and steve cold sean astin is so <laughs> dumb he's like he's bringing us in there to congratulate us this is how unaware this man is <laughs> the dumbness and he's a fucking they captain just, yeah he's a captain how asshole. did he get how did <laughs> how the did, cold austin powers <laughs> 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 How did he ever get promoted the captain? Good question. Know. Good question. They had another captain in there before. Apparently. I think. I think they had another, another sergeant. Cap- they, they, they probably, probably rips was- the former captain's nuts off of him. <laughs> That's. Yeah. I was about to say. And fed him he, to like, him. he like like body slammed him, and it's like I'm captain now. And, <laughs> and, Vic, and Vince <laughs> and McMahon no one dare like, challenge him. Yeah. yeah, Vince McMahon is like, yeah, sure, okay, you know, or sure, whatever. Yeah. I, you can have it. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> but they basically yell that, and it's a hilarious kind of scene. Let the Wookiee win. The sergeant says so many fun things, like flying steak. What the fuck is that? And how would you like a cup of shut the fuck up? I'm trying to remember. That, that, Something that, about you busted a guy's testicle. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Busted, busted a guy's testicle. Yeah. I yeah. think it was. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, uh, that that chief was was like, it, it's one of those kind of perfect things. Like in a, in a good kind of lighthearted action cop movie, you need to have a police chief like this. The problem is, is he is in exactly one and a half scenes. Yeah, and it's like uh, this movie. It, it felt obligatory. Yeah, it felt. Yeah, it no, was just kind of like, like I've seen, oh, I've we need one of those scenes in all those movies that people like. So maybe they'll like our movie more. Yeah, <laughs> the problem is, is I think Adamo Paulo Coltrero only watched like Samurai Cop and, and stopped at that point. And it's like, okay, well, this is what's in these action movies. Dumb shit, right? Okay, right. I can do yeah. this. <sighs> So yeah, from there we we, I, we learn that they have to go to classes, and there's this really dumb fucking scene where they're talking about kids or hostages to this oh, whatever God. to a terrorist, and all of them have a stupid ass idea of how you're supposed to navigate this situation. One of them's <laughs> like throw in a a flash grenade and then go in there and shoot the guy. And yeah, obviously not taking anything seriously. No, you know, or they're yeah. really just this fucking dumb. Yeah, well, the they, are, they are pretty meatheadish. Yeah. Um, you can also tell, by the way, that that this is um, one like quadrillion percent written by a guy because the two female characters talk like jock guys. Yeah. And that gets yeah. fucking old immediately. Yeah, I mean, they don't have yeah. to be girlish, but but they can't talk like every other guy in the fucking movie. Well, well, that's <sighs> another criticism, to be quite honest, is. All of them, all four of them, are the same person. Yeah. Well, I don't know. One of them are really distinctive from the other, from another, in my well, opinion. Well, well, well. Uh, freezer bag uh, Gomez Adams is not 
it is separate from the rest of the gang because he is like a big fucking his head is made of of, of hamburger meat look at that guy yeah which he knows a lot he was going to be a butcher so he knows a lot about yeah. his head and his hamburger meat yeah. yeah but uh but yeah they they have that scene and the captain stone cold gets up and you think okay this is where he's going to show us he's actually not an idiot and he's taking this stuff seriously and he just t- retells the other three stories as one thing no we're gonna throw this grenade and that grenade and we're gonna kill all the children and whatever and they all (laughs) laugh and they all all laugh laugh. yeah so obviously after this class they need to be sent for more hostage training (laughs) and we'll (laughs) and they're gonna be they're gonna be sent (laughs) to be fired but yeah that's what they should have yeah it's like (laughs) it's it's like they, they literally put them out the pasture because they send them not to just another training facility. They send them all the way to fucking Canada. Yeah, they send them to bum, bum fuck Vancouver. Yeah, because yeah, and, and one of my other really big laughs towards the end of the movie, and I'm not really skipping ahead here. I'm just saying, at one point in time, you see a gigantic paddy wagon full of weapons that reads Los Angeles SWAT on the side of it, driving around in a winter wonderland. <laughs> Look at the scenery. It is fucking yeah. loaded with, with yeah. snow. And there ain't no they went out. Mountains. They went out to the. They went out to like Big Bear or something. They went into the mountains. Yeah, <laughs> it did say Big Bear. It did say Big Bear. I think Big Bear. Lake. Did it? Yeah. Oh, no, that 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 would be an attention to detail that I am shocked by. It one hundred percent Big Bear Lake. I promise <laughs> I, you. I, I, I'm right. not, I'm right. not so sure that it wasn't like Lake Alkaline in that fucking <laughs> northern Yukon or something. If it said like Big fucking, Bear Lake, then then I give it a pass. They they yeah. at least aware. No, nah, I should. think they I think they filmed this right next door to the fucking Weapon X fucking facility or something. Well, man. they this definitely is... didn't shoot it in Big Bear. They shot in fucking Vancouver. But at least they tried. At least they tried to make they the setting. They picked a place better. that would look like that would where they Okay, right. well, okay. I will also contend that they barely shot this movie. Oh, okay, well. That's fair. That's very fair. Yeah. Uh, remember that room that movie Four Rooms? This was the remake yeah. of it. There, this Probably. movie is made in four yeah. rooms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's actually called Two Hangers. <laughs> two, hang- <laughs> two Hangers. No, that's next week's movie, Chuck. <laughs> whoa, whoa, slow that, down. That's next week, man. But that's no, that's a lot of hangers in next week's movie. Oh God, so many hangers. <laughs> I know exactly how many hangers. By the way, guys. All like, right, so like, let's not. That brings up a good point, that though. That brings up a good point. You can make a movie that isn't only four rooms or four locations or, or a few locations. And it'd be really good if the writing is strong and the acting is strong. This movie did not have strong acting or strong writing, but it did have like four fucking rooms. And that makes it really frustrating. Like that's where I started getting frustrated with this too, because like yep. you guys kind of are kind of right. But I also kind of also disagree that this premise of the premise of this movie is actually halfway decent. I, but I only disagree on principle because I was getting really fucking tired of that room with that eight ball fucking graffiti in it. Yeah. Like, um, 20 Look, shots of that wall with the fucking flaming eight ball. And I was like, I'm fucking we're getting, done with this. we're getting to the premise and it is, it is an okay premise. I mean, honestly, there are movies made about this exact premise that are actually very good. Um, so it the premise is, is found is strong. It's just an execution. Okay, what's at, the premise at, then, Jason? Every is facet it? is poor. Jason's so drunk. We can't get get. It. I'm not drunk. He'll do it. He can do it. I'm not drunk. Here's the premise. So our 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 four SWAT team members have to go to this remote facility to do their um, uh, training exercises. You know, they have to kind of like, they have to bust into the rooms and shoot the dummies and not shoot the hostages. There's this whole facility that's set up for this, for the, apparently the LAPD. They get there, they start the training exercise. At the same time, you have uh, two Russians and a prisoner of some sort who show up. And the prisoner is supposed to lead them to some sort of package. Uh, and it's pretty obvious that the prisoner is put upon. He doesn't want to do this, but he's been, he's obviously uh, in uh, duress and he's got to do this. At the same time, two Italian 
people. Well, not Italian, but they're they're part of the mafia, I guess. No, they are Italian. The, they are meant to be Italian. Italian. Every but single one of one them of is an African American, and the other born one born in Rome, just like Kobe yeah, Bryant, motherfucker. Just like Kobe Bryant. Yep. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's and, that's uh, whatever. Shit, man. They show up. The, at least. They show up at the same. It's explained at least. They show up at the same time. And they are after the same package, and they really and they recognize the guy who has been captured by the Russians, and it creates a standoff situation between the two of the two sides, and and then they. This hear, is when the SWAT shows up. They hear the yeah, the SWAT shows up. They hear the the gunfire. Uh, well, the SWAT's already there. Yes, they, uh, but they yes. hear they hear the training exercise and like, what the fuck is that? The SWAT okay. wasn't there at first. They show up later because they're like, let's go hide the cars over here and maybe they'll Whatever. drive by. It doesn't matter. They, well, they don't, the, they're the, not aware of their existence. The well, SWAT they're, are they're, not aware of them. Right. They're, 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 they're there yeah. because the, the sirens, they hear the sirens. Yes. From and, the and why, yes. and why, yes. why, why do they saying. hear, why yeah, do yeah, they yeah. hear the sirens? Because, because Black Dynamite loves the sirens. He likes to hear the sirens. He wants yeah. to def- can, and can I say one thing here? I don't mean to derail you. No, but there, there is a, <laughs> there is a scene when the SWAT is showing up where it's shot, I think, from a drone, like it's flying around in the sky. May I think maybe to make you think they were in a helicopter at first, but it's so out of place. I'm like, oh, they're in the sky. They're flying. They're flying where they're going. And it's like, nope, we're they're in a SWAT truck. Yeah, like, this and, makes and, no sense. Why are they showing this aerial shot of a drone that looks like it's because <laughs> they had a Go drone? Just, because they had a drone. Yeah, no, just, they're, yeah. they're, they're yeah. driving in the van, and and it's really it's really costing the taxpayers of Los Angeles County a lot of money because they're driving all the way from L.A. to fucking like Northern Territory, Canada. Big I don't. Yeah. Ca- I do not. That's a long. That's, that's a long drive. That's there a, are big bear. I'm. I promise you, there's big bear lakes up in Canada. <laughs> So anyway, what you have now is a situation where you have L.A. SWAT, the Russian mob, the Italian mob, both after something. The SWAT team is totally unaware of any sort of treasure that might exist in this warehouse. These other two factions are, are looking for it, uh, and then they're, they're all at odds. And what you have is you have the, the Italians and the Russians teaming up to deal with the common enemy of the, the fucking LA pigs, right? They right. don't want any business with them. They're going to deal with them first and then figure out their shit later. Um, and that's kind of the movie from there, or really. Yeah, yeah pretty I, much it is. And um, so it should be noted also, uh, so the, the really um, – so when when they think okay we'll just wait and see if the cops just come and then leave us alone because we're upstairs or something they're downstairs um it should be noted that um the cops are there to shoot the the paper bad guys right like yeah, they, they have, yeah, yeah yeah and uh but the thing is is that they do not have real ammunition they have um simunition as somebody called it all right, so chunk chunk bulkhead goes downstairs. <laughs> like, go tell, go to uh, tell whoever's down there to get the fuck out of here until two o'clock, so we can finish our job. And he walks down there, and he's all like, "Hey, whoever's here, you gotta go." And they're like, "Fuck you!" And they shoot him, and he yeah, they shoot it, him in his vest, so he's not dead yet. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, it's actually it's actually not a bad scene because they um, originally are just like, "We'll just wait him out. We'll just be quiet." and see what they're about and maybe they'll leave. But then there's a, a, a skirmish amongst the two factions. One of the Italian dudes tries to get fresh with, with the, with the Russian lady. He says, and, to her, oh, yeah. he um, says to her, I would crawl a mile to eat the peanuts out of your shit. Yeah. yeah. That's gross. That's um, I, I, I called, <laughs> I, I ended up naming her Butterface Inski. Yeah. That's yeah, fair. That's uh, gooder. Um, and she ends up I don't know somehow in the skirmish, and so in the skirmish, a, a gun goes off, and then our people who were supposed to be rooting for the LA SWAT hear it, and they're like, "What the fuck's that?" And like, is there another team here training? It wasn't a gun. She like she like. Oh, I thought it was a gun. No, she was she was the, putting them against the wall. She hit him wall. into that 
the the, the metal track, regardless big, regardless they, they hear it and they're like is there another team here i thought we had this to ourselves go tell them to get the fuck out we got it first and I then a, yes that's that's when shit goes down i have a question yep. um sure. how do you how are they gonna know if they pass the test if they're self testing themselves here yeah great there's question. no superior there the, the superior told them he wants to, them to bring back the boards to make sure there are no bullets in the 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 shadows <laughs> that are behind the bad guys yeah he's a bigger idiot than they are because uh, that's easy to take well, yeah, they but, could have just but, shot it from up close or something. Yeah, they could have yeah. just done that at a bar in fucking West Hollywood. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I okay, in but an also, alley, you know, also while they were fucking taking tequila shots. <laughs> <laughs> is it possible? Is it possible this movie could at no point in time uh, afford to have more than five people on set at any one time? <clears throat> is there Probably. a scene in this movie in which there are more more than five people? In, on frame, in frame, at the same time. I, I mean, does that I really don't like? Think so. Does that? But that is that. Well, I, that, that. That would explain why there's no superior officer there to, to Steve Cold. Oh no. yeah, I mean, yeah, they. I mean, they explained it poorly. Why or how they were going to prove their, their methods. You're, you're right, though. Though they did try to explain things, which is kind of endearing. Yeah, like this movie knows that it's kind of bad and it's really flimsy and none of it makes sense, but they try to kind of like explain things away. Yeah. yeah. They try to fill the holes for you. They try to fill the holes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's poor, but at least they make an attempt. Yeah. Yeah. So after, after they shoot bulk chunk or whatever his name is, um, they knock him down and they're like, uh, well, I guess we got to kill him now. So they shoot him through the forehead. Right. And they drag his body behind this thing. And that's when they hear the shots. The other three hear the shots and they're like, wait a minute, why is he shooting down there? So they all walk downstairs, they walk out into the open and they have this weird standoff with the other group who knows they don't have real bullets. Yeah. But they feel the need to explain to this cops how it's going to go instead of just fucking killing them. Instead of just firing? Yes. Yeah. They're like, here's how it's yeah. going to go. We're mm-hmm. going to kill you. But we're going to wait long enough first for you to get away. So I'm going to count to 10. He doesn't say any of that, but that's what it felt like, right? And Stone Bob is like, hey, Yeah, Stone Bob, go. Brian Austin Green is like, yeah. hey, we got to tell these guys, we got to tell my team to get behind the steel door in time. Yeah. He's like, on my, on my, on my count. <laughs> Stone Bob swap pants. Yeah, Stone Bob swap pants. Because they just killed Patrick. I yeah. hope I, I hope I never meet. I hope I never meet Steve Austin in real life, and he's heard this episode because he will like take my tiny head and smash it. I'll just say this: it's for as be bad, like Ricky o. <laughs> yeah, it would be. and I would pay five dollars to watch. <laughs> you pay five dollars to watch me get my head yes. blown, uh, blown uh, Ricky up. Ode style. Yeah, if I can. Ricky Ode. Uh, We'd have to have a party the night before just to say our goodbyes, but I'd pay five dollars too. <laughs> I might even well, pay six dollars, <laughs> which is more than Steve Bob made making this film. I bet. So he'd be like eleven dollars. Oh. I'll crush his head twice. <laughs> so they escape. They escape into the stairway while you know these terrible shots. So both of these movies were doing. The next two weeks are terrible shots. Everybody, oh, everywhere Better. and every, yeah. every place. Yes. By yeah. the way, at one point in time, they shoot the door. Right? They shoot the door that they go behind, and and one of the little because like you know, there's a there's a special effect when you shoot a, a wall or a door. Or something that's supposed to like little sparkles, right? Well, mm-hmm. one of them in the wall next to the door is still sparking, and I was trying oh, yeah. to figure out did they hit like the like the like a like a power line or is that just a shitty special effect and it turns out i think it was just a shitty special effect oh i'm sure i mean that's that's what this movie is one shitty special effect (laughs) yes and and so is stone bob yeah (laughs) yeah I was begging. I was begging. My, I'm going to get my head crushed, too. It's going to be great. I was begging for Jesse Ventura. I was just like, why? I would take, I would take an 80-year-old Jesse Ventura over, over Stone Bob Steve 
Colton. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, you're reaching. You're reaching I'm now. Reaching. I'm reaching. <laughs> it probably has never been my been my strength, Chuck. <laughs> By the way, uh, Bulk Slabhead's name is uh, Blanco. Blanco. And, and the yeah. whole time I was like, "Nice catch, Blanco." And he nice catch, Blanco. So. <laughs> okay, so he's dead. They escape back in. I'm gonna blow through this next part because we can blow through it, now. please. They. They escape back in. They go upstairs like, we don't have any guns. We're fucked. Let's go out the window. The bad guys are like, hey, we're going to shoot out the windows if we see their faces. Now how are we going to get up there? Well, it would take us 12 hours to knock down the store. I'm going to call my friends in to help. So the Russians call their friends first. Yeah. And they also have a big giant ladder. (laughs) Yeah, they have a big giant ladder that they're like, we'll just go up. We'll just climb up there and there, get them. They don't. Yeah, they don't have any guns. And we'll shoot them. Go get them. Yeah, just go get them and them. throw them out the window for all. Which we is honestly a pretty good plan. Yeah, sure. it wasn't bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's a direct. It's a direct plan. Yeah, he's it's more faster have... than than taking down the steel door, which they say, yeah, like, it's going to take like forever. So yeah, yeah, we don't have time for that. But they're idiots. They moved the SWAT truck into the building. Oh, and totally. And they basically yeah. left it unattended. Uh huh. So uh-huh. Steve Pants is like. I'm going to go down there. I'm not going to tell you guys what I'm going to do. And really, that's just him saying, like, we're going to surprise the audience. I'm not telling you what my plan is. Um, And he goes out through the door. He runs out. He finds Kenny, who we haven't even talked about yet, really. The fucking scummy dude who knows where the package uh, is in um, the building. Can can I tell you a little bit about Michael Eklund that I learned from Michael Michael Little? Just Michael Eklund is probably the most recognizable face in this movie, other than other than uh, so Austin. Cool. Face well, I'm just gonna uh, ice box. <laughs> let me just read the first uh, two sentences on Michael Eklund's Wikipedia page. Michael Eklund is a Canadian television and film actor who is known for playing the role of the villain or anti-hero. Period. Second sentence. His characters are often described as being quote creepy. Yeah. Creepy, smarmy. Oh, Whatever, he is. Yeah. What, what did I call him? I called him a uh, shitbag uh, Ethan Hawke. A shitbag Ethan Hawke is perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly what it is. He doesn't know how to um, grow a mustache. No. No, no I think he, he shaved that. He shaved that down the middle. Yeah, I know I, he did. He was going for a Klingon mustache. Like a Fu Manchu or, or yeah, a Klingon, yeah. yeah. He, um, he's in a lot of stuff. Like He usually does show up as a shitbag. He's usually the guy you don't trust. Um, he's got that kind of face. Um, he's actually, I, 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 I usually like him in a movie because he plays a great weasel. Oh, he's, like, he's, I, he's, he's my really favorite character weasel. in this movie. Yeah, I, I, I like him a lot. Yeah, um, he, he also has my favorite. He does his job in well movie. in this. Yeah, Yeah, he holds his own for sure. uh, He has my favorite line in this movie at one point uh, because Steve Austin. Wait, I feel like I just said his name right, but I doubt that I said (laughs) his name right. You did. You did. You called him Steve Austin. Oh, my God. I did it wrong, but also called him by the right name. Um, You left out his honorific, though. He's made he's made a lot of Uvi Bull movies. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Uh, But anyway, so he he ends up coming across Kenny and like yep. he you know he takes off with kenny because it's like well i'm a cop i can't kind of leave this hostage guy i don't really know who he is but i don't really have time to figure this out and, and i better be right or i i would better gamble be right that i should be saving this guy than be wrong and you know whatever and have him get killed when he shouldn't uh, but anyway he takes off with kenny and at one point in time kenny keeps talking it's like oh it's this thing it's this thing it's i got to do this thing and and um uh captain frank uh, his name is tate but in wikipedia it says captain frank tater (laughs) (laughs) i like it which matches the shape of his head he's like who you gonna believe yeah i believe wikipedia every time (laughs) um so he so captain tater captain tater cold frank <laughs> he, he, takes, uh, he says to to Kenny, he's like, "Hey, you're really beginning to piss me off." To which Kenny says, "Yeah, I have that effect on people." And I thought that it's, it's, that is the first line he wrote, and he was like, nah, "It's all downhill from here." Yeah, yep, the rest yep. of the movie. <laughs> that was like that was like the mo- the the line that he spiraled the movie around. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. And it totally. was perfect. And it was perfect. perfect. So yeah, so while he was grabbing Kenny, the other two SWAT members had their individual battles, 
with the people who'd broken through the door. Um, one of which is a hulking man who's fighting the girl. And then we get some Stone Cold wrestling because Stone Cold comes up and he's like, yeah, you're right. They send a bitch to do a man's job. Yeah. Kicks the <laughs> shit out of him. Like, it, like it's a Stone Cold wrestling match. Yeah, I yeah, kind of feel there. like Stone Cold. I, I kind of feel like Stone Cold sometimes were writing checks his ass couldn't cash in some uh, of his one-liners. Maybe. I mean, because he cashed he was, it in this movie at least. <laughs> He he's just not good, and I want to be I want to be as fair as possible to Mister Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'll say his name correctly. <laughs> I I just don't think that um, acting is really in Mister Stone Cold's wheelhouse, and that's okay, Mister Stone Cold. Don't force it, buddy. Right, and he, I mean, like, I wouldn't say Arnold Schwarzenegger is a great actor, but he has tons of charisma. Oh, that yeah. is, Jesse Ventura is not a great actor, but so he has charisma. Tons of charisma. Yes, yeah. you can Stone see Cold, why they were in the movies they were in. Stone yeah. Cold, feel, he, it feels like he's uncomfortable. Oh, at it looks every, like... In every, in, in every scene. He's just not comfortable with what he's doing. He's not comfortable with what he's supposed to do. He's not giving, getting any direction. Stone he's not... I don't think anybody's really challenging him to, like, be a certain way. Like, as an... All right. All right. I'm not a film director. But I would look at the dailies on Stone Cold. And I'd be like, you know, Steve, you're not giving me what I need here. You know, you really need to be a little bit more magnetic in the scene. Let's get a let's get a little bit of energy here. You know, like like direct the man. Like give him something. Are uh, you saying that give him some uh, feedback? Because uh, I don't feel like he knows that he's doing a poor job. Uh, are you saying that Captain Adamo from the uh, Battlestar Galactica yeah. was too yeah. afraid to? Yeah, uh, I do. To direct. Some I do. I do, and I think a little think bit it of did, hero I, worship, maybe. Yeah, a little bit of hero worship, and it did. It did our our, our good friend Steve Cold uh, an injustice. Well, it really I did. will say, I, will I haven't seen that. other movies with with Steve Cold, but I would hope that he had better directors who got more out of him than Adamus. Well, did. I think I think you kind of answered your own query. query? with the first part of the query i think you went into a circular pattern here because i might have i might have you have not seen too many of his movies a circular dependency yes you, you hit a circular dependency here uh-huh um because you haven't seen too many of his movies because none of them are really kind of worth seeing are, are worth seeing right yeah, and so here's the thing now you said something but that's a circular dependency in and of itself right well, you, you said something there that was very constructive. Now I'm going to say something that isn't at all. <laughs> Steve Austin looks like his life is constant pain. Yeah. The way yeah. he's built, the way he walks, the way he moves, the way he yeah. grimaces, the way he smiles. I don't think he smiles, but he might. The way he, he moves his face looks like existence is pain to him. He and doesn't you know, look like he's having a good for, time. You know, yeah, I, I, I also you. think there's probably physical pain there too. As but someone yeah. who who had bone on bone arthritis in their knees for years, I was walking pain too. So I get that. Like that's not an excuse. I mean, I think during those times I was probably way more irritable than I am now, but I still could have fun. But he, sure. but yeah, I you did. That. And I've seen you laugh, and I've seen you like like be hilarious when you were in. We have, we have never seen Stone Cold Steve Austin. Never. That's what I'm saying. He, de I mean, it, maybe it is constant pain, but that it's doesn't. A, it, he can't give some effort to this fucking right. thing. No, that's the problem. Is I don't I don't understand why he's in this movie if he can't have a fun time being in this movie because like, he's a huge star and he's going to get a paycheck. but it's like he's he's trying to but but oh he but yeah but at the same time well like, I, dude, it feels like you know what it is jason your your, your name is the paycheck your presence is the paycheck bring something to the role yeah, I, I, I think what you're i think what you're kind of circling around like you're a, like a camera on a drone uh that's gonna make <laughs> that's gonna make it's gonna make chuck uncomfortable is i don't know uh, what's going on there but I think what you're kind of circling the drain on here is that maybe he doesn't feel comfortable lightening up because he feels like that may take away the toughness of his character. Yet, 
I have seen him in the wrestling ring, not personally, not for an entire match. I can't watch wrestling because it gets real boring after a while. But I have seen <laughs> clips of him in the ring where it looks like he is having fun. Yes, I have too. Yeah. It's possible, and he didn't bring any of that to this movie. Like, yeah, not and one I, ounce of it. it it's yeah. a fallacy, though, to say that maybe – well, maybe he's just dumb because there are blueprints – from the 80s through 90s of how to be yeah. a, a big we don't even, dude yeah. and be in action movies and still give a performance that your character is tough but still funny. Or, but, but, or, but, or be tough and have a slight tender side, both Arnold and, and Sly. Yeah, that's what know. I'm saying. There's blueprints yeah. for that shit. This is yeah. why I blame the direction on this because, because like Jeff said, I mean, wrestling is acting, and he, he absolutely he has charisma. He was a very popular wrestler. So and popular, you don't become that way without having charisma. So popular that he decided to come out of retirement and was basically handed a championship yeah, over yeah. somebody who was an <clears throat> up and comer. I just saw something about that. You just before. don't you don't you don't achieve that level of fandom without having a thing like yeah. having a spark and, at the same and, and time, this director was completely inept in bringing that out in this movie yeah and, and uh, you don't have to be the rock whereas i feel like the right. rock could plow through any bad directing right i mean um i uh, i've seen enough rock movies to know you can he can personally plow through any bad he's naturally charismatic though exactly like that, that's the way he is <laughs> right and um, we don't even need him to someone be, like vin diesel need... has to work it at it oh god vin which Diesel's is vin got... diesel would be what i would say steve austin needs to look to to try to find some more balance to well it, 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 at the very job. least it would be the middle ground between because vin diesel also kind of has a little bit of stone cold itis where a little bit yeah but he, is, he brings he, a little more there he does bring a little bit more but at the same time he he struggles to have his meatball sub head in a movie that that <laughs> expresses any feeling right you know um but this is the least, longest time we've ever talked about a single actor in an episode. I'm almost <laughs> positive. Well, and it's, it's tactical force yes. with yeah. Steve Bob Johnson. Steve Bob Johnson. But, 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 it's, but it's kind of perplexing, right? Because he should be a charismatic movie star. Like, like Steve Bob Johnson should be amazing <laughs> he in is, this movie. And he's he not. Is, he, his name is above the title. His face yeah. is half the poster. And if you could have put you could have put any one of us in that with a little bit. Michael of Jai White is way way better. Way way better. Way way better. Because way he, better. Because he knows. Well, he's an actual to, actor for one right. thing. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's fucking he, black. He's fucking black dynamite, man. <laughs> yeah. But he but he is underutilized. Like he yes. is underwritten. He's underwritten. He's underdirected as well. Like it's nobody, like took all of nobody the, really gets out of this movie with their full potential, right. other than maybe Michael Shanks. Shanks. Yeah, who, Michael who Shanks. Like, yeah, he's. I think Michael Shanks was just like, I am going to make this character, and I'm going to fucking do it. Right. And I guarantee you, he ad libbed shit. Like Michael yes. Shanks to me feels like he actually embraced the role. Yes. I was yeah. actually going to ask you guys how many how many times do you think any one of the people in this movie said to the director, What's my motivation? I don't think a single one of them did, and I think Michael None. Shanks or if Michael Maybe Shanks once. did if Michael Shanks did, he got turned away and then he just figured it out. And then he just figured his own shit out. out. That's yeah. what I'm guessing. They were given no direction and they were just like, Well, no use asking that guy again. What I'm I, supposed to do my, here. I came away. I, I started the watching this movie with like, who the fuck is Michael Shanks and why is he billed above Michael J. White to holy shit, Michael Shanks is legitimate and I'll probably watch anything he's in. Now, like, well, he, we have because Shanks is in uh, is in uh, Jason X. Yes. Yeah. He he's is. also he's also um, married to the other Jason X uh, alumni. Yeah. The uh, Andromeda. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. both Andromeda and Jason X. Yeah. He's legitimately a a charismatic actor yeah like he has got it he's got it and at i now first, understand why yeah at he first was i was like influence. at first i was a little annoyed by him but by about the two-thirds mark when he and steve austin were together trying to get out yeah. of the situation with yeah. the uh with the rondo hatton looking motherfucker 
that that showed up to, that was like the uh, cauliflower he's you know? jardine keith yeah. jardine i think his name is well he brought self-awareness to the movie well but like, then but but like he was almost parodying the movie at times yeah and seeing yeah. him up against and with stone cold steve austin it's like this guy is like seriously taking circles around yeah, yeah. the yeah. lead of this movie yep. and yep. and he is breathing in and he's almost like two stone colds fucking face making fun of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, um, let's catch up. Let's catch up real quick. Okay. Just to where we're at. Can I, can I, can I, yes, also get some mustard? can I also get some mustard with that? Yes. Catch up in mustard. <laughs> Would you like catch up with your mustard, sir. Um, <laughs> So we had the the Russians call in their extra people. Pretty much all of the extra Russians have been killed in one way or another. Now the balance flips to the Italians because they call in a group of people um, to come and, you know, take care of business, to which one of them is Keith Jardine, um, former UFC cauliflower ear dude. Oh, God, um, yeah. He's a fighter. Yeah, at first I Literally. thought he was buff Michael Stipe, but then I realized, no, he's Rondo Hatton. Mm -hmm. Well, I, didn't, him because I didn't know who the fuck he was, but I was positive he was a UFC fighter from his yes. call. I thought for yeah. sure he had prosthetics on that chin because that, that's some unnatural shit. That yeah. was either a UFC fighter or rugby player. It was one of the two. Yep. Yeah, a lot, a lot of places UFC. where where ears are getting punched one way or the yep. other. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so he he takes over the role of I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna clear these fuckers out. Well, while that's going on, um, Michael Eklund's character, the weasel dude, is like, hey, I know how to get out of here. There's another way out of here if you just shut the fuck up and listen to me. And he shows them this path that goes to, what is it it's called, the crash room? Right, it's underground tunnels. Underground tunnel to another area, the crash room. So they yeah. take the package, which we have not mentioned yet, is being covertly hidden from us as to what is in it. That so was we have a fuck. It's a MacGuffin. It's bullshit. It's the Pulp Fiction MacGuffin, and it's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. It's totally stupid. Yeah. So they're escaping with this, and while that happens, uh, the Jardine guy, I don't remember his name. His name is Togli Fiero or something like that. Yeah, because he looks Italian, too. Yeah, he's totally Italian. Yeah, 100%. All of our, all of our he's, Italian from is... he's from Rome. He's from Rome, too. Okay. <laughs> He's, he's like from like Italian Samoa or something. I don't know. Italian Samoa. I love it. Hey, I want an Italian Samoa sandwich. But he goes <laughs> up the know. ladder, combs the area, comes back downstairs, opens the door to which somebody proclaims, which kind of cracked me up. Man's a ninja. Yeah. It's like 300 pound monster. And he's calling him a ninja. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, this is when we learned that uh, Kobe Bryant, or they re-mentioned the Kobe Bryant and his Italians joke. Yeah. Because the black guy's from Italy. Um, I do not think that that uh, would get you into the, let's put it this way. Club. For that, Club. Gen for that gentleman to get into the Italian mob, um, he would have to do things that are completely, totally impossible. I'm just going to put He would it have that to way. save a boss. You'd have to he was Italian. Mm. You'd have to save a boss. But he's Italian, guys. He's also black. He's from Rome. You have to save a boss. Um, yeah. You'd have to be born in Rome. You'd have to be the son of the Pope and uh, and all of those things. I'm just saying his his blackness immediately probably takes I him know. out of I've seen true romance. I know how they feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yep. So so the Jardine guy or Taglafiero calls the other italians and is like hey go there now because he knows that the tunnel they're in leads to this other area so steve austin decides to go back for some reason do you remember why he went back down the tunnel they heard a they heard something they heard something so he That's goes back right. to check it out and he's like hey yeah. i'm gonna go check this out you guys yeah. go and that this yeah. is when he gets um no, never mind. That's not when he gets that. He does. He gets like the he gets the drop on him, and one of the the um, Italians gets him. Yeah, they they all basically become prisoners at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. have the two, the other two SWAT members, which is um, Hunt and I can't remember her name, uh, Tony oh, Hunt and uh, um, Ilya. No, not Ilya. Uh, Gennard. 
Gennard, they get taken by the Italians. No, yes, the Italians. Yeah. Oh, Don't by the way, him. one guy keeps calling Tony Hunt Mike Hunt. He calls him Mike Hunt in the thing, and he's like, my name's not Mike. Uh, yeah, I have that note here the mike yeah. hunt joke whatever yeah, yeah whatever yeah. and, and yeah. then and then for and then for black dynamite to turn back to him and say my name's tony as if to say shut the fuck up this movie's bullshit as if to say i don't know <laughs> even know what you're joking about yeah it's it's almost as if he should be saying i wish i was making black dynamite 2 instead of this right yeah well honestly at this point we're just kind of like just look can we just get to the end i'm trying i, mean, I'm trying. I know i know <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're art, Im, art imitates the movie here yes we are yes spinning Keep, our wheels <laughs> yes carry on charles <sighs> so yeah so so hunt and Gennard and swarmy dude get captured by the italians austin gets c- captured by the russians to which Jardine and a group of people go back um, to where they originally were and is, they're like, hey, I'm going to kill the rest of the people here. You need to get out from behind the truck. Um, I'm going to give you six minutes to figure out what you're going to do before I kill you. He basically counts down from like 70 or something. Yeah, he you know, does. Which, and, and also uh, Stone Bob says, hey, um, uh, Stone Bob Swap Pants. Give says, me a gun. Hey, <laughs> give me a gun. One, two. Uh, they're gonna Jim be able to cut. <laughs> they're they're yeah. gonna be able to cut through this uh, this van like it's Swiss cheese because this thing isn't for, uh, fortified. Um, but by the way, um, we never see a single goddamn bullet pass through that fucking van. I think he lied. I think you're giving him a lot more credit than than the maybe there. maybe but whatever. I think he that gets- rental had to go back the next day, and they're like, "We can't shoot this up." I think we need to debate this for ten minutes at least. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Important. Let's spin our way <laughs> just like this fucking movie. <laughs> some more. So then we get some we get some stone cold stunt driving, which is pretty yep. sweet. Yep, he yep. gets in with the Russians and, and uh, Ilya, who I forgot to say early in the movie, at very, very first, I thought was Darcy, the male girl. And I was like, no, nope, uh, that's not Darcy. No, nope. um, no. It is I will not. say I will say that something I like about this movie is is how the allegiances move and how they change. Yeah. Like, like I like that. It is, it yeah, is a little bit of a game of survival, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. Um, I don't like this movie, but I like that idea. And um, it, it, there are movies that have done that well. Um, and I do enjoy what they tried to do with that. Where like, oh, yeah, I mean, there's bad guys and there's good guys, but there's not. They're, these are all just kind of people trying to survive, and they're, and they're making alliances as they go. So it's kind, of, it's kind of – they do that aspect of the movie pretty well. Yeah. yeah. And while Stone Cold is escaping with the Russians, um, the Italian boss kills Kenny. Right? Yeah. He's like, you don't know where this thing is? All right, well, you're useless to me. And he just blows his fucking head off. I mean, that's so belabored, though. It's like, I mean, everyone. They all have to explain their fucking. Everyone except Kenny saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> yeah. As it turns <laughs> out. As it turns yeah. out, maybe not. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! The, the end of this movie is. And this movie is so ludicrous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go out on a limb here to say this, Jason. I don't give a flying fuck what you think about the ending of next weekend or next week's movie. This it's better ending than this movie. I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay, so we get yeah, that one kind of has a similar kind of fucking dealio doesn't it it makes um, at least more sense um <laughs> so so stone bob not is hard dry. to do that's a low bar but yeah <laughs> he's driving the car over to the the crash room whatever it's called at one point we don't even care why anymore god bless you chuck for keeping this episode on track like, i'm trying seriously you're doing yeah. a great job hey you know you're what I, ne- I needed a vacation and i'm glad <laughs> chuck was like I'm, you're, you're I'm doing you're doing a bang up fucking job dude I'm, so, yeah, I'm, so i got a feeling I'm, it's gonna be me next week so yeah it is yeah, it probably. is it most definitely is I'm on oh. vacation, motherfuckers. <laughs> so the other, the other, <laughs> the other swap members had 
gotten the upper hand against the Italian. So now that they, they have him backed up against the wall, Stone Cold's like, watch this, everybody. I'm going to drive through this fucking wall into this other building. Um, and the other car with Jardine and all the other Italians are outside. And this is the point where I, I'm sure one of you guys want to talk about Michael Jai White's. Oh, man. His, so his weapon. I got, I got to, I got yeah, to. Yeah, this you is, got this it. Is, you got it. This is the best part of the movie. Honestly, like he, he find he gets his grenade launcher. Out the which of their... I do like that that that's that took uh, Cold John said, "Hey, um, where w- w- since when did we get issued? Those? When did they start issuing those? It's like yeah. they don't. This is for my personal collection." And he's got this grenade launcher, and he's like starting to load it. And he's like, "My grandma." He said, t- "Tells a story about his grandma. I don't even know what it is." I think he uh, says, he, "My he gra- I call her. I call her Marcia." After my, my gra- gram, after my grandma, something like that, because so, so, because she was so loud or something or like uh, something. something. Yeah. yeah. So then he's so then he says so he got cocks it he's ready to go, and uh, and uh, Stone Bob says we'll shoot it already. He's like I need a line, and he gives it to him. I guess he like moves the car in like a direction or something. And he's and he shoots it out of the front of the SWAT vehicle. Because I guess the no, they're in the doorway to the hangar. Are they? Yeah, doorway? When he said, yeah. "When he said I need a line," he's trying to figure out his one-liner. <laughs> I was. Yes. I thought so too. Not a line yes. to shoot. I need to know what to. say. I need to know what to say next. And wow, what does he come up with? He says as he fires the rocket, the grenade launcher, "Eat my grandma." <laughs> <laughs> um. What and now? There, yeah, um, what there, now? Eat my was, grandma literal head explosion on my couch while I was watching that as the truck exploded. So it was like a literal representation of probably all our heads when that truck. Well, exploded. Jeff thought he said, meet my grandma, which is, <laughs> which is, hilarious. Which is funny, which is funny, but also my grandma is way fucking funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think the movie was that smart to do that. Eat my grandma. Eat my grandma. <laughs> like, what did he mean by that? What does he mean by that? That is the question I will always have well, I think for this he's movie. offering up his grandma's post. I think it's like heat lead. If I, I ever like... met Aurorio Julio Hormarmio, I will ask him what he meant by eat my grandma. Or I will ask Michael J. White, did you ad lib that line? And if so, why? Yeah. Well, why is probably it's like motherfucker. I needed some goddamn personality in a stupid dumb fuck movie. Probably. <laughs> yeah. So the next the next ten minutes of this movie are so fucking stupid, as if it hasn't been stupid already. I think I've sworn more during this episode than any other because I'm so hostile. Well, <laughs> um, it's warranted, sir. Yeah, it's warranted. So the Russian guy is like, "Hey, now it's my turn to you know take everyone hostage again." So everyone becomes a hostage. <laughs> Right and, this, and I they're haven't all. About this. I haven't noticed this. Yet, yet. So the Russian guy is like, "Hey, I'm going to take you all hostage. I'm going to go outside and smoke." And I'm sitting there thinking, "It's like, why are bad guys going outside to smoke? Shouldn't they just smoke in the place because they don't follow?" The Shouldn't rules? they just shoot the fucking people? Uh, I ain't you know why? About that. I ain't you know why about they that. did we gotta it get that way? Ninety minutes. We got to get the ninety minutes. They so they wrote themselves into a corner. They didn't know how. So Ilya's behind them with two machine guns and he says, go ahead and kill him. And he walks outside the smoke. And they're like, well, how do we get him out of this situation? We don't know. Let's do it off screen. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. So he goes outside the smoke. And yep. He's like, shoot the gun, shoot the gun, which is kind of funny. You know, Shanks being funny in that moment. Shanks is being great in that moment. Yeah, he's, he's, got no, he's got nothing it. to work with, but he's making it work. It's yeah. way better than whatever reason they would have gotten out of that situation, for yep. sure. Yep. Um, so he goes back in, and now the Italian has the gun. The other – the guys are hostages of fucking Gan. And they're like, well, you can explain to us why you want to kill us, but we can I have one last request? And they're like, oh, sure. What's your stupid request? They're like, can we put in we put in our earplugs? Or he starts to reach his pocket, and the guy's like, whoa, whoa, don't do that. He's like, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. And they Don't worry him. about it. It's my For whatever plugs. reason, they believe him. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like, can we wear earplugs? And they're like, earplugs aren't going to save you from bullets. And have then somehow, I, um, have have I told you guys the story? Sorry to derail again, but this made me think about this, and I laughed again. Have I told you guys the story of my brother and the earplugs? 
I don't think so. All right. So we were at the Indianapolis 500 um, because, you know, we live in Indianapolis and that's what we do. That's what we do we out go here. To, we go to the, we go race cars every, every weekend. Every we weekend cars. it's we yeah. go to the Speedway. <laughs> anyway, so we were at the Indianapolis 500 and, um, you know, it's like we, we sat along the, the front straightaway. So it's really, really important to have earplugs if you value one of your five senses. And um, so my brother, one of my brothers, Jerry, is passing out the, the earplugs that he always brings because he's the conscientious one. And um, he hands them to me and my brother, John, to which I put my earplugs in and I look over to John and he's like, uh, Chuna, I'm like, what, what do you got there? He's like, oh, circus peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? He, he ate one of the he earplugs. He ate the earplugs? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so That's amazing. So I just that sounds like that. something Ice Bob Austin would do. <laughs> well, when Ice Bob was handing out the, the – when Ice House was handing out the, the – <laughs> the earplugs all i could imagine was the camera painting over to my brother john just putting it in his mouth and i would have lost my shit if that oh, was in God. this movie okay so i have a story about grenades from this movie i'll tell you <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have man. A story about grenades, oh man here we go now. here no, we I'm go gonna, i'm not gonna tell it now um so anyways they put the the earplugs in and the reason for that is so they can drop a concussive grenade yeah which how the hell did steve austin have it in his hands all of a sudden i will right. never know it's it's totally stupid yeah, yeah. i feel he like drops he produced it. it from his butt <laughs> yeah. yeah he pooped it he pooped it out he has a little he has a little pouch that that he that he uses to pee and poop and he pooped out the the grenade too yeah yeah in his little in his jumpsuit Oh yeah, yeah. and it, it's worth noting because he's. I, uh, can you imagine Steve Coldawson just taking a squat and like pooping out a? a uh, no, video? I can't. But I can imagine. Our I'm doing it right now, and it's hilarious. He can knock one out of his ear, probably. Um, so yeah, he, <laughs> he drops, shakes his head, and it's just a couple of grenades bouncing. Yeah, around. just. I feel like it's his function in life. Like uh, he he turns he turns you know processed. You know, he processes food into fucking stun grenades. I thought you were about to say he turns processed cheese into stun grenades. Well, that too. Any edible food source, he turns into stun grenades out of out of his out of his butthole. So somehow, God, you if seen... I ever meet Stone Cold, he's been absolutely. All right, shut up! Shut up! I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow Taglifiero, the cauliflower ear guy, survived grandma, and he's back in the room. Maybe he's the way that they flip the situation. Who the fuck knows? But he, when they drop the concussion grenade, runs away. I have no fucking idea why. He just runs away. And Stone Cold's like, I got him. And he chases <laughs> after him. Like chase, I say chase like liberally. He kind of limps after him. Yeah, because <laughs> he can't run. The poor guy can't run. I feel no, for him. He really can't. No, he He's can't. in so much pain. He truly is. Like, oh my god. I actually, I actually kind of want to. Places like, where bones meet, he is in pain, man. I actually kind of want to. I kind of actually want to give Stonehenge ice bob like a like a hug because he is truly in pain I you do, can tell i do, I do want to give him a nice little peck on top of his easter island head <laughs> yes, oh my god yes, yes just like a little like it'll be okay buddy so anyways he chases after him he has this really sentimental fight with tag Lafiero and ends up you know running him through a pipe and yes. then then we cut to them sitting in the back of the SWAT vehicle, self-congratulating themselves. They don't care about Bulk Chunkhead. Who yeah, it's like a Blanco care. Nino's dead. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too bad your ass got shot in the head. Um, <laughs> and then they have Russian and other guy, uh, the black Italian. You know, we're, we're taking these fools in. So I don't know who wants to explain the end of this movie because I don't. I don't I just, either, Jason. Oh, I'm on vacation. Fuck. I'll do it. I'll do it for you. I'll no, I'll do it. I, I, I can okay. kind of maybe do it. Um, oh fuck! <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. All right, do I'll it. do it. I'll do it. They go back to the office, <laughs> and the sergeant calls them in again. And this time, Kenny, 
is there. <laughs> yeah. Well, first and they foremost, the, the, the chief is like, you guys are awesome. You're going to get a parade. And you're going to get this little picture that you'll tape Blanco Nino's face to. And that you can't, but you can't tell anyone about. Yeah, yeah that's what Kenny's it's like, like you, this, idiots, you idiots messed up my sting. Right, you right. You only thought that I died. I really didn't. You saw what I wanted you to see. And now you're going to And they to keep the saying, but you died. We saw you die. Like, you're going to hang on to that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually kind of funny. It's hot. But at the, the same time, time, it's kind of like, here's the problem with this. Uh-oh. <sighs> It makes no goddamn sense. Well, like he, it kind of does, but I, I accidentally read the end of the Wikipedia plot before I saw the movie, and it's not well explained in the movie. I don't, I'm assuming that, uh, that, that uh, Steve Cheese wrote the plot summary himself on this Wikipedia yeah. page because they, they say that Black Italian Man is also undercover. Yes, I mean, which is fine and good, but how do you see a guy get his head blown off and it not right. be real? That's it's the part pretty, that doesn't make sense. It's pretty fucking convincing when it happens. Yep. I took your yep. brain bits out of my hair, she, uh-huh. said. she said. The uh-huh. weather lampoon was in it, in on it or not doesn't, right. doesn't exactly. explain away how his head exploded. Exactly. exactly. But that's the end. And now yeah. they get to ride around in their truck and, you know, be cops again and do stupid shit. They still got and, that yeah. dumb fuck bumper sticker on inside their truck. And Stone Bob's like, sure, you can bring the Red Rider wherever we go. It's cool. We're cool. We're back yeah. to where we were before. Hey, if I can keep my, if I can keep nobody my learned nothing and we and we won the day, kinda. Yeah. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Barely. Barely. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, a st- I uh yeah and you know he's like hey man if I can keep my stupid Rodney King sticker and my stupid Confederate flag sticker you can bring your red rider anywhere you want good buddy. yeah I'm surprised they didn't you're, have you're like a my dummy. you're my quote unquote black friend so I'm yeah. not racist even though I have racist things inside this truck yeah Michael roll credits like, where where can they roll. find us everybody. <laughs> Chuck wants the fuck out. I want yeah. out. <laughs> Chuck, you did an admirable job. That you was did. really well done. Man, this is why you you you're getting the raise, Chuck. You kept you kept yes. this episode on track. Like yes. I don't think I don't think we could have done it without you, buddy. So <laughs> No. So that, you wouldn't have had to watch this movie without me either. So That's, that's true. Not, that's true. You you paid your penance, sir. Yes. <laughs> yes. I need a nap. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, there really isn't anything else to say about this. No, here's the thing it's like there is some fun that can be garnered from this movie. I mean, I laughed many, many times over stupid shit in this movie. And if I was doing a B movie anima article on this, I, I could, I very easily could, and I could really, really, really pick apart this movie. And do it in a fun way too. But the thing is, is that it it is exactly what you think it is. If you look at the box art, <laughs> it is exactly that. And there is a little bit of a kind of I do appreciate the simplicity of this movie. You know, it's like it, it's certainly not as complex as next week's movie. No, which is weird. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, it, it, here's the thing. It's like this movie could have had a little bit more, but you know what? They probably made this movie for like, I don't know, probably made the movie for like the cost of seven Big Mac value meals, but then also like, said that it cost like 55 million dollars and somebody pocketed a, the the rest of it and went out the back door with it that's what was in the case it, probably yeah. it's like yeah. oh it's the budget to this the movie, budget of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all mcnuggets what the fuck? fucking stolen that's a meta shit right there i love yeah. that yeah yeah um but all anyway. the actors they didn't actually film this movie it was the actors trying to steal the budget trying to get their <laughs> trying to get their paychecks probably. yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like a, yeah the, and half those russian guys actually did get blown up or yeah. italian guys got blown up yeah, uh, but, people, okay man. now i love this movie yeah yeah that's um, a great that that's a great movie right yeah. there uh yep. but i mean overall i mean like i didn't hate watching this movie it's not a good movie it's dumb but at the same time is it 
is it so dumb that it's bad i'm mean, bad or not a fun i'll say watch. this it's not it's not that M- my understanding of force movies this is one of them yeah i don't know works. about i don't movie. know about next week's movie well, I don't, uh, I agree. well here's the here's the thing chuck you're i'm not saying i don't like the next week's movie well here's here's like. the thing chuck next week when we come back to film seizure i'm gonna set this i'm gonna go ahead and start winding yeah, things just set this up. i'm gonna go ahead and start winding this down. Up. Um, next week we are finishing force february with one a f- f- quote unquote uh, no one a suggestion from a friend of the show yes two uh what we ultimately called a quote unquote force adjacent movie now right before anybody says anything about anything, Chuck, your role next week is going to act as judge in the trial <laughs> of Malibu Express. Andy Sedaris' 1985 masterpiece, Malibu Express, where I will act as the defense attorney. Jason will be the prosecutor. Judge, jury, and executioner, Chuck. Yeah, and, and aye, aye, aye. I am going to basically present the case of why I do think that this is a force adjacent movie. Um, and Jason is going to probably uh, t- t- try to uh, do the brain bits. Uh, it's not a force movie. It's no. Force. Well, hey, shut up. Shut up, prosecutor. Shut up, DA. It's not, it's not a force shut, movie. Shut up. You, <sighs> shut up. I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to take a uh, a fan request, but this isn't a force movie. And it's well, my it's, and it's my fault that I that I forced it into Force February. But well, we'll no, you didn't. All you of that didn't. next week. We're, yep. we're, I'm going to set the case. I'm going to have opening statements next week. I'm going to uh, I I will take care of the the I will take the driver's seat back from Chuck. Chuck, you did a great job this week. I oh, just, Jeff, I just Chuck, need to nap a little bit. Yeah, I just, I just had to nap through uh, a bulk of Wisconsin before I could wake up again and say, "Hey, all right, we're, we're driving through." And then, oh, we're still driving through Wisconsin, this big fat fucking state. Um, so, uh, with that, we are going to uh, close out Force February with 1985's Malibu Express. Um, so, you can find all of our stuff at filmseizure.com you can go there we're also in places like um soundcloud google podcast apple podcast uh stitcher tune in spotify um uh, uh audible as well uh, all those places just search for us we'll you'll find us <laughs> yeah. yes you will. Uh, every uh every wednesday morning new episode of film seizure yeah, and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter to get those updates, those sweet, sweet updates. Show, show. Every Monday afternoon, I've got Monster Mondays. Um, I don't remember what I have happening next. Hang on a second here. It's a Monday, and it'll be about a monster. Uh, it'll be Young Frankenstein, as a matter of Ooh, fact. Oh, nice. wow. That's uh, classy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll be talking about Young Frankenstein. Um, and then every Friday, we've got... Uh, B Movie Enema. That's my website. You can go over to bmovieenema.com. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for B Movie Enema. This week <laughs> is the Apple. Ooh. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, that one um, is a brain melter. And this weekend, the Saturday, uh, Saturday. Shout out to our friend Joe Baden, who put that in his top 10 musicals ever. Oof. Joe. Well, it is crazy. It's crazy. Joe, I mean, Joe, I, Joe. I can understand why some people like it. We have, we have friends who like it too. Um, I do not. Um, but the, I do not either. <laughs> uh, this Saturday, B-Movie Anima, the series, 7 p.m. YouTube, Messiah of Evil. I redeem myself after the apple. Oh, fucking A, man. Yeah. So that's, Messiah that's Evil the, is so good. It is very, very good. Um, so that's where you can find all of those good things. And next week we conclude – force february i am ready i i have my case i'm ready to present my case for why it is indeed force adjacent jason is a little inebriated i am happy that i will probably be able to win this court oh yeah i'm 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 coming in drunk i'm 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 coming in drunk to next week so i'm gonna be ready yeah i'm gonna parry mason the fuck out of this so it's gonna i have no chance but i'm gonna (laughs) i'm gonna put up a good fight all right you you try that um yeah, so playing the role of Harrison Berger will be um, 
Jason Oliver. So anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So until next week, I am Jeff Arbuckle. I'm Bud Iced Cold One. <laughs> 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 Uh, you derailed Jason. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> do your I'm, thing. Uh, I'm Stone Cold Steve Austin, and you've been listening to Film Seizure. <laughs> Fucking hamburger head over there. <laughs> <laughs>